hey what's up guys welcome back to a new video today i'm going to be showing you how to edit like natav and shard uh these two editors are probably in definitely in my top three list for my favorite highlight editors and i'm going to be showing you how to make their pre-shot effect that they're pretty famous for and yeah let's get straight into it so first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in our song and make sure make sure we're on 60 fps by the way just save this and we're gonna just go ahead and drag in our song so for the song i'm gonna be using is gonna be walked in by kevin powers and we're gonna go ahead and drag that onto audio 2 so that the clip audio can be dragged in here as well and we're just gonna go ahead and find the major first major beat drop here so so yeah right here right here this is probably the most significant beat drop of the song and i'm going to be using that so first so next we're going to go ahead and drag in the clips so for the first clip i think i'm going to go with this clip um you already saw this in my recent highlight video i mean recent client edit video i use this clip and yeah the clips here are pretty insane so yeah i'm going to be showing you how to sync them and do add velocity and all that so yeah first thing just gonna go ahead and find where uh see right here where the person dies so i'm gonna be go ahead and sinking to the pellet hit so right here is where the pellet hits and mark that press ctrl r on this and i'm gonna be showing you my velocity settings here so add speed point here left 10 frames and then add another one left 10 frames again Add another speed point and then go to back to the middle, go right 10 frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then write another 10 frames. And we're gonna go ahead and lock the audio channel 1 so that the uh, clip speed doesn't get, clip audio doesn't mess up. We're gonna change the speed for the first segment here to 50. Second segment here to, uh, second segment here, we're gonna change that to 400. Third one, we're gonna change it to 200. And fourth one here, we're gonna change it to 50. And I just go ahead and drag the uh, marker onto the clip. So yeah, right here, just like that. Just like that, um, looks pretty nice already. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and find where I wanna start the clip, which is gonna be right here when he places the wall. So yeah, I'm gonna just start the clip here and I'm gonna go ahead and sync it. So yeah, this is how it's gonna look without any effects. yeah that's pretty nice and next i'm gonna go ahead and next i'm gonna go ahead and add in my ident this is completely optional you don't have to do this if you want don't want to and yeah um, and but i'm just gonna be doing that because i really like how it looks and by the way the person who made my ident was eclipse fn it's a pretty nice guy pretty nice videos he made this really nice ident for me and you can go follow him if you want but anyways we're gonna go ahead and drag like all this into the beginning so that the ident has more time to use so yeah this is how it's gonna look you can add blur behind this if you want to but i'm not really gonna touch that because i don't really need to use that either so i'm gonna just gonna cut out the part with ident ends and it's just blank space and i'm just gonna delete that and boom right there pretty nice um and right there pretty nice so now we have all this space and we already have all of the velocity settings and stuff so next i'm going to be showing you the presets that you've all been waiting for so first we're just going to go ahead and drag an adjustment clip um you can drag this anywhere you want uh if you want this to guaranteed to work you're just going to drag it to the first frame of the timeline and make sure your uh, cursor your uh this this whatever you call this make sure that is on the first frame of the timeline as well we can go into fusion and now I'm gonna go ahead and add in the preset. So I'm gonna be adding in the shard one first because that one is easier to use because there's no masks involved in this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and drag that in and you can see all this here. I'm gonna just go ahead and drag this white box. Um, just go ahead and drag this white box to the yellow transform triangle and then drag this white box to the S shake and drag that to media out. And yeah. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and click on transform here and then we're gonna find the keyframe where find the final keyframe which is right here so yeah after we're on this final keyframe which is the keyframe where the shot should be and we're gonna go ahead and go back to fusion we're gonna press ctrl b on the adjustment clip to cut it 
and we're gonna go ahead and drag this and make sure we have the end of the um make sure we have the end of the uh end of the adjustment clip on the on the frame where we want the shot to hit so yeah this is how it's gonna look i'm just go ahead and put the playback version the quarter red so that might be easier to render out and we're gonna go into fusion to render this as well but yeah it's pretty intense so i doubt anyone will be able to render this out so yeah this is how it's gonna look um in the cut page yeah and you can add in i'm gonna go ahead and add in a little velocity i mean i'm gonna go ahead and add in a little uh shake preset here and i'm not gonna be showing you the settings for this because this is one of the shake presets in my edit pack so yeah um not gonna be showing you the settings here but yeah let's just go back here yeah, that's how it's gonna look. Um, it's pretty hard to render out, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it here. That's how it's gonna look, and I'm oh, I have to save this. I'm gonna save this as um, jar tutorial. But yeah, next, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and cut the clip here, and we're gonna find the next. And now we're gonna find the next beat drop for the next clip, obviously. So. Yeah, this looks like a pretty good beat drop, but I'm not too sure if the clip will be able to fit in here. Because um, the second clip is a pretty long clip too. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this in right here. Um, let's see this. Um, so the clip, this second clip is a pretty insane clip too. Look at that. And then SMG kill. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the clip here and i'm i really doubt that we'll have enough time but we're gonna go ahead and also put a marker on where he kills the guy so right here when the uh when the siphon appears right here yeah and that is definitely not enough space so i'm gonna just go ahead and find the next beat drop <laughs> so i'm gonna be using this hold uh to sync Yeah, this is not the very this is not a very optimal keyframe. I mean this is not a very optimal beat drop since there's literally no beat drop, but it's good oh, yeah, enough. Yeah. But it's really good enough. So yeah. Just go ahead and press M to mark that and next we're gonna add in the velocity settings for this as well. So yeah. Um now that we're done with that and it's all synced, let's just play it again. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, obviously not as good as the first beat drop, but it's good enough, really. So yeah, now I'm gonna be showing you how to use uh, the second preset. So for same thing, you wanna make sure you have an adjustment clip in here, and we're gonna go ahead and drag it to the beginning too. First frame of the timeline, first frame, make sure your marker's on the first frame while you drag it in. I'm gonna go ahead and drag in the preset. Um right here in that out pre shot bulge and you can see here that there's a lot of settings here so why is there a chroma key here there you can see here that this does not look very good because you know it uh the the body glow thing is everywhere and there's no mask upon it but first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sync it before we like change anything we're gonna go ahead and just sync it so make your just click on the transform here and look at the last white line which is the last keyframe here and this this keyframe is going to be the frame where it's gonna uh the effect is gonna end so just go back and press Control b and just go ahead and delete the rest of this and just put this here so this is how it's gonna look without any mask at all yeah it's pretty hard to render too but yeah next we're gonna obviously add in the mask that we obviously really need to add in because this won't look very good without the mask all right so now we're gonna be adding in the mask so we're gonna go to the first frame of the uh, adjustment clip we're gonna add in a PLY which is a polygon and make sure you're on the first frame by the way and here is the polygon we're gonna go ahead and drag that on top 
of the BC Circleized Glow. Colorized, colorized glow and now you can see that the colorized glow is completely gone which we don't want either so we're gonna go ahead and select the areas we, we do want the color colorized glow which is basically gonna be like a tiny little rectangle around the character like this and we can drag in the ends here a little bit too because we don't want that much space but yeah you can see here this, this already looks all right and we're gonna go ahead and select all these uh little dots here and we're gonna go ahead and press this button up top so yeah this makes it so that the entire mask is rounded and you can still see here that you know the edge here looks terrible so next we're gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of soft edge so yeah that soft edge looks pretty good to me and it just kind of smoothens out like the edges for you and yeah next we're gonna go ahead and see if the character has any significant movements if it does then we're gonna go ahead and move the mask along with the significant movement so no movement here yet no movement here i don't know why there's this frame i literally don't know what that is but yeah, completely no movement. I think this clip is pretty good because there's no like extreme movements on the clip. So yeah, there's no extreme movement. So this is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So now that we're done with this, we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this polygon. And we're gonna just drag that polygon out. We're gonna drag the black box of the polygon and drag that onto the color corrector too. And I'm gonna put the polygon here. I'm gonna put invert on this. All right, so how this is gonna, so what that is gonna do is we're gonna, this is gonna make it so that uh, this tiny box here won't have like the color corrector setting effect. So yeah, this is how it's gonna look at the end. So yeah, pretty nice, pretty similar I'd say to the Nadav uh, preset. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully this helped you out, and hopefully I can gain some Twitter followers from this. Um. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, subscribe. I'm doing a face reveal at 7,000 subscribers, and I'm going to be putting out more tutorials and more edits like this. I'm staying on that grind. So yeah, subscribe and show me some love, and peace out.